Right, so Dead Bank has announced its results for the six months ended 30 June 2019. The bank's chief financial officer, Raisi Bemorati, joins me from our Johannesburg Stock Exchange studio. A very good afternoon to you. Thanks for joining us on SABC News. Your headline earnings increased 2.6% to 6.9 billion rand. What are the main contributions to that? Good afternoon. Um, yes, our headline earnings were up at 2.6%. Uh, uh, we were very pleased that uh, revenue, being uh, the net interest income and the non-interest income, both uh, grew jointly at 6.5%. Uh, we had a, a very uh, good uh, you know, uh, contribution from our Africa business uh, ETI. And our expenses were also very well controlled at 5.5%. So overall, uh, our growth in earnings was also supported by pre-provisioning operating profit at 7%. So even though our impairments have increased, but we still saw the bottom line coming through, uh, you know, despite the tough economic environment under which we saw in the last six months. It is a very difficult economic climate in South Africa. So I'd just like to find out how your corporate and retail clients have behaved in that period, particularly when it comes to debt. So the uh, clients uh, have been increasing across all our different businesses, which is uh, really quite pleasing. And we have also seen, you know, in terms of our loan growth uh, at 6.5 percent, that is uh, coming through from all our different businesses and as well as deposits coming through. I think what is really difficult is the backdrop of the economic environment that we see, you know, consumer patterns being affected by the uh, economic environment. The spending by consumers is obviously low per consumer. But, uh, you know, overall, we have seen growth supported by the volume in terms of our number of clients. We have uh, continued our journey of, uh, you know, refining our strategy and uh, delivered on our digital platforms that will enhance the manner in which we service our clients. So we are very excited about, you know, the fact that we have launched uh, the first two of the digital programs which will deliver our personal loans and transactional accounts completely digitally. And uh, in the second half, we expect juristic uh, clients, i.e. companies, to also be able to onboard uh, on a digital platform. And as we carry on, by end of 2020, that uh, the top 10 of our products should be digitally enabled. Okay, you've spoken as a bank about urgent action needed on the South African economy. What is that action? So we noted that uh, our economy is in the early stages of a turnaround. Um, we identified that there are a number of policy reforms that are required, i.e., you know, the long-term solution for ESCOM. If uh, clients do not have the certainty that there will be power, obviously you will uh, struggle to find, you know, a lot of uh, a large companies that would invest in uh, in economy where they don't know that uh, power. Uh, set the supply is a, a certainty uh, and other uh, policy reforms and it doesn't help that we also have some uh, you know lack of clarity around some of the things like uh, you know the uh, prescribed assets uh, sub uh, you know the, the, the nationalization of uh, of the south african reserve bank etc and those are the uh, category of uh, policy reforms that we uh, have identified as very urgent to unlock opportunities for growth in the economy we are, however, not sitting on the sidelines. We see ourselves as nation building and participate in areas where we believe that uh, we need to continue to stimulate growth in the economy. And as a result, investing in the likes of uh, the Youth Employment Service, where NetBank is the largest institution that has uh, invested in this uh, opportunity to create jobs, uh, job experience for 3,300 young people, uh, which will give them an opportunity to get uh, better opportunities for placements going forward. So it is an, a journey that uh, we believe that all South Africans need to come along and let's partner to continue to build the nation. You're speaking about jobs, but NetBank is in discussions with their employees to cut around 1,500 jobs possibly. Talk to us about that and how digital perhaps has impacted jobs at the bank in any way. So the 1,500 people that you're talking about is actually an engagement process that uh, we have started with our uh, employees where we are continue our journey of uh, operational uh, efficiencies and in one business called business banking which services uh, you know uh, businesses and another business that is called uh, relationship banking uh, which also services uh, businesses but of a smaller size so we are reclassifying a component of clients 
from business banking to relationship banking and 1,500 people who are involved in servicing those particular clients are the people that we are talking to uh, to mo move them from their reporting line in business banking into relationship banking and uh, the uh, of the 1,500 people 1,400 have been placed so they will have different uh, reporting lines but they are settled and they will carry on and do the work that they have to do of the remaining hundred we have put them in a redeployment pool where we are helping them to be placed in areas outside of uh, that environment of a uh, relationship banking or you know to reskill them uh, so that we don't displace them so um, the story around 1500 is probably not uh, well told from what uh, you has been reported before but the correct version is that 1400 of those individuals have been actually uh, located and the hundred we are working through to try and settle them so just to get clarity and my apologies for uh, focusing on that same issue and we've got so much to talk about there are no wide-scale job cuts to come at nedbank There are no wide-scale job cuts, uh, and the reorganization that we are talking about is in the normal course of bringing in efficiencies and servicing our clients appropriately. As you can imagine, when you set all those different limits uh, in the client segmentations, you know, those client segmentations change from time to time because, you know, a client of a particular size, uh, which fitted in a business banking, today they fit in a different category. So that is really what we are doing, and as I indicated, uh, the negotiations is the right thing to do where we spoke to the individuals who are going to be reporting differently from the way that they have reported uh, before. Interesting, all of this is actually happening in the same cluster, which is called relationship, which is called retail and business banking. Okay, let's leave South Africa now for a moment and go to West Africa. EcoBank contributed about 264 million rand to headline earnings. That's a very different story from what was happening, say, in the first quarter of 2017. Tell us about that. So indeed, we were quite uh, encouraged about uh, the gradual recovery of uh, ETI. As you know, this uh, investment uh, that uh, we have with ETI, where we hold 21%, uh, has gone through tough times when the uh, oil price came down and uh, the Nigerian economy uh, uh, came under a lot of pressure and uh, Nigeria actually experienced some, some recession. So, and we see that as uh, basically being behind us and uh, ETI's contribution, even though it is uh, in rent terms a small component, so ETI contributing 260 million rents out of uh, uh, close to 7 billion rents of our earnings, but it is uh, showing some improvement and we saw the associate income line increasing by 54%. So very encouraging and we believe that uh, with the number of uh, interventions that have been uh, put in ETI, to try and uh, de-risk uh, part of their portfolio will see us through a continuous journey of uh, recovery. But of course, you know, West uh, African economies, particularly Nigeria itself, it is still also going through a journey of uh, recovery. So uh, it is not an overnight, uh, you know, uh, recovery that uh, will be uh, seen here, but we are seeing definitely some uh, positive signs coming from ETI. Rasib Morati, the Nedbank Chief Financial Officer, thanks so much for your time on SABC News this afternoon. It's time for a short break.